The death of King George V. On a notable Tuesday, January the 1st, 1936, the world received the awakening news of the passing of King George V. The announcement from Sandringham House, where the king peacefully passed away, stated that the king's death occurred at 11.55pm with the presence of Her Majesty the Queen, the Prince of Wales, the Duke of York and Princess Royal and the Duke and Duchess of Kent. At the age of 70, King George V had reigned for over 25 years, almost reaching the milestone of a silver jubilee. Born during the era of his grandmother, Queen Victoria, his full name was George Frederick Ernest Albert. His accession to the throne was unexpected, as his elder brother, Albert Victor, was initially second in line for succession, behind their father, Albert Edward. At the age of 12, George commenced his education aboard the HMS Britannia, following the footsteps of his elder brother, under the belief of their father that the Navy provided the best training. While Albert Edward pursued further education at Trinity College, George served in the Royal Navy, allowing him to explore the world. The tragic demise of his elder brother in 1892 unexpectedly positioned George as a second in line for the throne. Consequently, he discontinued his naval career and was bestowed titles by Queen Victoria. It wasn't until 1910, after the passing of his father, Edward VII, that George ascended to the throne. His reign faced the turmoil of the First World War, in which he found himself at odds with his cousin, the German Emperor Wilhelm II. Due to the rising anti-German sentiment during the war, King George V decided to change the British royal house's name from saxe coburg in Gotha to Windsor. This decision also led to his family adopting more British-sounding surnames and relinquishing their German titles. Adding to the upheaval, King George V's cousin, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, was dethroned during the Russian Revolution in 1917 and placed under house arrest. Despite initial considerations to grant asylum to the Romanov family, deteriorating circumstances for the British people and concerns about the potential spread of revolution to the UK led King George to abandon his plan. A year later, Nicholas II and his immediate family were tragically murdered by the Bolsheviks. Despite being on the victorious side of the First World War, the prolonged years of conflict took a toll on King George V's health. His extensive habit of heavy smoking exacerbated his already existing chronic bronchitis. To alleviate his condition, he frequently undertook trips to the Mediterranean, with his final one occurring in 1925. Three years after this trip, King George fell seriously ill with sepsis, requiring drainage. The Prince of Wales took over the royal duties for the subsequent two years. However, George never fully recovered. His health further declined after the passing of his beloved sister Victoria in December 1935 at the age of 67. Despite doctors' recommendations to curtail his activities, King George insisted on attending the entirety of his sister's funeral procession. A month later, on the 15th of January 1936, complaining of a cold, he was confined to his room at Sandringham House, never to leave it again. In the following days, King George drifted in and out of consciousness, and by the 20th of January, his condition had significantly worsened, and his physician, Lord Dawson of Penn, made a controversial decision to administer three quarters of a grain of morphine. King George V passed away at 11.55pm. The decision made by Lord Dawson that night has sparked debates to this day. Was it an attempt to alleviate the king's suffering, or was it something a bit more sinister? Lord Dawson, born on the 9th of March 1864, began his education at University College, London, in 1879, completing a Bachelor in Science in 1888. Subsequently, he obtained his Doctor of Medicine degree from the Royal London Hospital in 1893. Lord Dawson's entrance into royal circles commenced in 1907 when he became a physician extraordinary to Edward VII. During the First World War, he served on the Western Front, rising to the rank of Major General in the Royal Army Medical Corps. 
After the war, he resumed his previous position at the court of King George V. So let's revisit the events of the 20th of January 1936. A statement released by Lord Dawson and the King's other physicians conveyed that the King's life was peacefully nearing its end. Much of the present day knowledge we have stems from Lord Dawson's personal diary. However, it took nearly 50 years after King George V's passing for the truth contained in his diary to be made public. In Dawson's diary entry, he described that around 11 o'clock, it was apparent that the final stage of the King's life might continue for many hours, unbeknownst to the patient. He explained that waiting through these hours merely prolonged the inevitable, exhausting the observers and hindering any meaningful communication and prayer. Therefore, Dawson took it upon himself to end the king's suffering, injecting three quarters of a gram of morphine and shortly afterward, one gram of cocaine into the distended jugular vein. Within a short period, the king's breathing became calmer, his appearance serene and the physical struggle ceased. Lord Dawson made this decision to ensure the king's dignity and to permit the announcement of his death in the more appropriate morning papers rather than the evening editions. Dawson had been an advocate of euthanasia, which involves intentionally ending a life to alleviate pain and suffering. However, he opposed a move to legalise euthanasia in the House of Lords later in 1936. This topic remains a subject of widespread discussion among historians and physicians. After the release of Dawson's diary in 1986, the New York Times suggested that Dawson had expedited George V's death. It appeared evident that Lord Dawson was fully aware of his actions when he administered the lethal dose that night. Moreover, Dawson acted without the consent of the Queen, who held strong religious beliefs, and the Prince of Wales. While the family agreed not to artificially prolong the king's life and wished to spare him from suffering, it remains debatable whether they would have supported Dawson's actions on that fateful night. King George V passed away that night, surrounded by his close family members, and two days after his death, his coffin was transferred from Sandringham House to St Mary Magdalene Church. The following morning, King George V's coffin was transported to Wolverton Railway Station, accompanied by his sons walking behind it. Upon reaching King Cross Station in London, the coffin was taken to Westminster Abbey. It stayed there until the 28th of January 1936, during which approximately 800,000 individuals paid their respects to the late monarch. The surviving sons of George V stood guard over their father's coffin, a vigil known as the Vigil of the Princes. Interestingly, many passers-by failed to recognise the four princes who were dressed in full uniform. The funeral procession commenced on the 28th of January at 8.45am. King George V's coffin was placed on the Royal Navy State Funeral Gun Carriage, transporting it to Paddington Station. There, it was loaded onto a train. At stops such as Windsor and Eton Railway Station, the coffin was transferred to another carriage. The final stop was Windsor Castle, where the funeral service was scheduled to occur. As the king's coffin was carried up the chapel stairs, the new King Edward VII and his brothers saluted. The funeral service, although relatively simple, was attended by the king's close family and several other monarchs were around the world, many of whom were closely related to George V. The Book of Common Prayer was recited and Abide With Me was sung during the service. Initially, George V was buried in the royal vault at Windsor Castle before being moved following Queen Mary's death in 1953. Lord Dawson continued in the royal household after King George V's passing. He was granted the title of Viscount Dawson of Penn on the 30th of October 1936 and served during the short reign of Edward VIII. Dawson passed away in London on the 7th of March 1945 at the age of 80. The truth about the events of January the 20th 1936 was not revealed until 1986 unbeknownst to Edward VIII. George VI or Queen Mary. When the first volume on Dawson's life was published in 1950, his widow requested the omission of that particular night. 
at the time when this information emerged, Queen Elizabeth, George V's granddaughter, was reigning, but her reaction to this revelation remains unknown. The only statement from Buckingham Palace was that the incident occurred a long time ago and all those involved were deceased. <laughs>